Stitches show, the lazy, hazy days of summer are coming, I promise. <laughs> and one of the nicest things you can do for your hair in the hotter months ahead is just put on a kerchief. Kerchiefs are super useful, they're one of my favorite hair accessories, but rather than just keeping your hair out of your face, they can also be really elegant and even kind of romantic. They have this sweet, kind of nostalgic sort of flavor to them. I love them and they're super popular right now, so we are going to be making a kerchief today. And we're going to be using Summer Nights by Lion Brand. We'd like to thank Lion Brand Yarns for sponsoring today's video, and we'll have a link to their website in the description box down below and also in the pinned comment. And you can pop over there and check out all the different colorways that Summer Nights comes in. It's a super fine weight size one yarn. We've used it several times here on the show because I can't get enough of it. And I love that there's a little tiny twinkle that runs through all the yarn. So whatever project you make with it has just a little bit of sparkle. It's like a summery, starry night sky. Anyway, that's what we're up to today. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a romantic looking little kerchief together. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. You will need less than 200 yards of size one super fine weight summer nights yarn for each kerchief. So if you have a regular ball of summer nights yarn, each regular ball has around 400, a little over 400 yards in it. I have a super bonus bundle, which has 800 meters or 875 yards in it. So I should be able to get three, even four kerchiefs out of this. One for me and one for all of my girlfriends. <laughs> You're gonna want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using is a smaller one. It's a 2.75 millimeter, also known as a C or a two in the US. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a chained ring. So we're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. And we're gonna chain six. at least six. So six to begin, you're gonna find that first chain that you made and join with a slip stitch. And I say at least six because you just want a little chained ring. You don't want anything that's too big, but if you have trouble seeing it or your ring just feels like it's too small, you can add a few more chains. You want a ring that just barely fits across the top of your finger there. We're gonna chain one and we're going to half double crochet into the ring eight times. So you're going to ignore the chain one. It's just there to kind of get us up to the height, or the, the quasi height of a half double crochet. And we're going to half double crochet right into the ring eight times in total. Now we're not joining, we are going to be working back and forth and back and forth and we're going to be making a little triangle as we go. And as we go, that triangle is going to get larger and larger and larger. So this is just the beginning. We're never going to repeat this. <laughs> this is just sort of the center around which the entire triangle is built. We're going to chain five. And this chain five counts as sort of a stitch and two chains, or a half double crochet and three chains. So you're just gonna kind of ignore the first stitch. So this one right here that we've come out of, so that is technically accounted for. You're gonna skip the next stitch and you're gonna half double crochet into the stitch after that. So half double crochet. And this whole kind of, these first couple rows are just to establish ourselves with a shape to work off of. This really isn't how the rest of the pattern goes. We're going to chain five. We're going to skip the next two stitches and half double crochet into the third stitch. Let's try that again. Working small here. Oh, 
There we go. Chain five more. And you're going to half double crochet into the last stitch. So skip one stitch. You should have one stitch left and half double crochet into it. And that's all we're going to do for half double crochets. Those first two rows are really just to establish a shape on which to build the rest of our triangle. And you can sort of see that triangle starting there. Okay, from here on out, this is what the pattern will consist of. We're not half double crocheting anymore. We're moving to double crochet stitches now. Every row begins with a chain five. And that chain five counts as a double crochet. So the first three chains count as a double crochet and then a little chain two, because we're always going to be creating chain two spaces as we build our triangle. Turn our work, and into that first big space, we're going to work three double crochets. So another nice thing about this pattern is that you're really just going to be working into spaces from here on out, not really concerning ourselves with the top of stitches. So three double crochet into that space, chain two, lots of chain two spaces in this pattern. Into the middle space, we're going to create the peak. So the peak will always be worked into the middle space, and as we go, the middle space will become easier to see. So into this middle chain five space, we're going to work three double crochet. Three double crochet or a shell, chain five, and three more double crochet into the same space. So the chain five in between shells in that middle space is the same thing for every row going forward. So you're always going to be creating sort of a shell, chain five shell into the middle space, and that's what creates the peak of our little triangle. So that's the same every single row. So there's your new chain five space. Now, if you have trouble recognizing that, you might want to add a little clip or a stitch marker to it so that you know that that's the middle space or the peak space. And that's what we're going to work into. That little shell, chain five shell becomes the peak space every single row. Before you leave, chain two, got to create a new chain two space. And into the last big space, we're going to work three double crochet. three double crochet, and this is really important, chain two, and find the third chain up from the bottom of that turning chain from the previous row, so find, find the third chain and double crochet into it. Okay, now let's look at what we've got here. Row three, the row we just completed is pretty much how every row is going to look going forward. Now we're going to do a few more rows together, but every row begins with what we call a post. So we chain five and three of those chains count as a double crochet. That's a post and two of those chains count as a space. Every row ends with a shell, three double crochet, chain two into that same big space, and then a double crochet into the third chain up from those chains from the previous row. And what we're doing is we're creating a little post on the edge of every single row. So it begins with a post, it ends with a post, because you want these little tiny chain two spaces, because you end up working into those every single time. So it ends with a shell, chain two, and a double crochet into the third chain. And then everything else is pretty much just three double crochets, chain two, three double crochet, chain two, except the peak, that middle chain five space, always gets shell or three double crochet, chain five, shell or three double crochet, and before you leave, chain two. So every single row is going to look like that going forward. All right, let's do row four together. Every row begins with a chain five. That chain five counts as a double crochet or the post and a chain two space. Turn your work. Into that first chain two space, don't miss it. It's always the little one right up against the post. You work your first shell or three double crochets all into that little space. 
And I don't know about you, but I find sometimes I have to spin the stitches around my hook just so I can see those loops that I want to work through, just at the beginning. So three double crochet or one shell. Chain two, we're going to want nice big spaces going forward. Into the next chain two space, you're going to work shell or three double crochet. And a chain two. So we're always working shell, chain two, shell, chain two. Until you get to the middle space, that big chain five space, that's the middle point. That is the peak or the sort of what's going to be the bottom point of our kerchief. Every time you get to the chain five space, you work shell or three double crochet. chain five. So we want to create the new chain five space and into the same space three more double crochet. So shell, chain five, shell. That is the peak. And if you have trouble keeping an eye on where that chain five space is, you're welcome to use a little stitch marker. Just make sure you move it to the new chain five space after each row that you complete. So for example, you just finished that new peak, you'd put your marker back in there and it'll hang out there until you get back around to it on the next row. Before you leave chain two, we're creating chain two spaces all along the two sides of our little triangle. And you've got two chain two spaces left now in your row. So this one, three double crochet, chain two. There's three double crochet. There's my chain two. And into the last chain two space, don't miss it. It'll always be right between the shell and the post. There's one at the beginning and one at the end of every single row. Three double crochet. Chain two. And then you look for the third chain up on those turning chains, get the third one. If you get the second one or the fourth one, it doesn't matter. You're just uh, making sure that you've created a post. So just get your hook in some part of that third chain, and that's what you're doing. You're creating a little post all the way along. There you go. And that's row four complete. We're going to do row five together, and row five is exactly what you're going to repeat over and over and over again until we get a nice sized kerchief going here. So once again, every single row begins with a chain five. That chain five counts as a double crochet and a chain two space or your post and a chain two space. You're going to turn your work into that very first chain two space. It's always small and it's always sort of slipped in between the post and the first shell. So don't miss that space. You're going to work three double crochet or a shell. and a chain two. So it's always shell, chain two, shell, chain two. The only time you're not chaining two is when you're chaining this big five here in the middle. So let's get up to it. Three more double crochet and a chain two into the next chain two space. Or shell, chain two. Shell, chain two. Here's another chain two space, so it's shell, or three double crochets. Chain two. So shell, chain two, shell, chain two, shell, chain two. Every single chain two space along either side gets shell, chain two. When you get to the five chain space in the middle, this is where we work our fancy peak. So it's three double crochet. or one shell. Chain five for the new peak. Another three double crochet into the same space. Chain two. 
and of course two more chains to create the new chain two space before you leave. But that's what you've done into the chain five space. So shell, chain five, shell, or three double crochet, chain th five, three double crochet, and then chain two more as you leave. And into each of those three remaining chain two spaces, you're going to work three double crochet, chain two. So here's three double crochet, chain two, into the next space, three double crochet, chain two. And don't forget, every single row ends with another chain two space sandwiched between the shell and the post from the previous row. You still work three double crochet, chain two into it. So one, two, three double crochet, chain two, and then before you finish, find the third chain of that chain five from the previous row and double crochet into it. Just grab a piece of it. And that creates the post for the end of the row. So every row has a post at the beginning and the end. There's a little tiny chain two space between that post and the first shell. So always make sure that you're not missing your chain two spaces. And when you finish a row, you're completing it with a shell, chain two, and then a double crochet into the top of the turning chains. It's very important that you always have the same number of chain two spaces along each side. That's what keeps it nice and equilateral. And of course, every single row you add is going to grow your shell count by two shells. So each side will grow by one shell, and each side will grow by one more chain two space. You're only ever going to have this chain five peak space in the top middle, because this is what's going to be that nice peak draping down the back of your hair when you've got your kerchief on. So you can just go ahead and repeat row five, that's the row we just did, until we have a sizable kerchief going. And I'll catch up with you in a few rows. Okay, I've done 25 rows in total so far, or 23 rows of the little shell stitch. So remember, this is row one, right back here at the beginning. And then those three big spaces, that's row two. And then we start our little shell stitch pattern. So you can count from the center out, one, two, three, four, five, etc. And that's an easy way to count your shell stitch rows. I've done 23 shell stitch rows, or I've, I've completed 25 rows in total of the entire pattern. So obviously you can make your headscarf as many rows as you want, but you want it to be an odd row. That is so our border will work. So you want an odd number of shell stitch rows. And um, I've got, if I measure across the long side, which would sort of go over my, my head, um, and the ties are gonna be off of these two ends here, this is about 20 inches across for me. Um, Everybody's tension differs, hooks, yarn, it can all differ a little bit. So that's why I say it doesn't matter how many rows you do in total, but you want it to be an odd number. So before we get to our border, we're gonna start with one of our long ties. So don't fasten off and make sure you've got an odd number of rows and right from the edge that you're on, doesn't matter what side, we're going to start to chain. You're gonna chain anywhere between 60 and 70, depending on your tension, the size of your hook, that sort of thing you want uh, a fairly long tie, a tie that's long enough that you can use it to tie a knot or a simple bow. So that's why I say between 60 and 70, but you can do more or less depending on the hook and yarn that you're using. I've chained 70, 70 itty bitty little chains, and that works out to be about 10 inches long for me. So. 10 inches or 25 centimeters, that's how long I want my tie to be. So however many chains that takes for you, it doesn't have to be an exact number, but whatever you do, write it down because you want to do exactly the same thing on the other side. And to make a simple little tie, all we're going to do is half double crochet all the way back. So we just skip the first two chains from the hook, find the third, and you're just going to half double crochet into it. You can grab the top loop, you can grab the bottom loop, doesn't matter. Try to keep it the same though all the way back and you're just going to half double crochet in each chain. The exact count is not important. You just want to go for 
an evenness here. We're just making ourselves a nice even little tie. And remember, the ties tie under your head or under your hair, so they're not going to be super visible. So if they look a bit janky <laughs> or wiggly or squiggly or something when you're done, don't worry about it because they're going to hide under your hair. I have half double crocheted in each chain all the way back. You can kind of just pull on it a little bit to sort of smooth out your stitches. And that is a perfectly good little tie as far as I'm concerned. That brings me all the way back to the edge. So that first chain that I started, you want to half double crochet in every single one of them. And now you'll be right up against one of the spaces. So make sure you're holding your kerchief so that it's the long side that you're looking at. And we're going to work uh, our first row, um, the first sort of edge of border across the long side, and then when we get to the other side, we're going to repeat this tie. So make sure you write down the number of chains that you started with so that you don't forget by the time you get over here so you can recreate it. All right, let's have some fun with the border pattern. We're going to change things up a little bit. We're going to be focusing on the big spaces that sit next to the edge of the shells all the way along this long side. So into the first space, we're going to single crochet. So single crochet into the first space. Into the next space, we're going to work a split shell. So we're going to work three double crochet. Chain two and still working into the same space, three more double crochet. Oops. <laughs> there we go. So a split shell is three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all worked into the same space. Into the space next to that, you're going to single crochet, and then you're going to work a split shell into the next space. So that's all you're going to do. So into the first space along the side, you single crocheted, into the next space, you work three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, or what is commonly referred to as a split shell pattern. three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. There we go. And in between, so then when you get to the next space, you just single crochet. So you're alternating. One space gets a single crochet, the next space gets three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet and then a single crochet, and then three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and then a single crochet, and so on and so on all the way across. Remember, you're just working on the spaces, and this is the cute little design you're going to get across the front of your kerchief. So that's the little split shell, single crochet, split shell, single crochet pattern worked all the way across the long edge. And when you get to the little middle space, that part right where we began the whole thing, you're going to be single crocheting in there. So that's why we need a nice odd number of rows. And then you come all the way across and you're going to finish with a single crochet in the last space. And then however many chains you did on this side for tie number one, you're going to do the same number of chains on this side for tie number two. And remember, it uh, doesn't have to be exact, but you do want it to be roughly the same length, and then you're going to half double crochet into the third chain from the hook, and half double crochet in each chain all the way back, just like you did for the first tie for tie number two. That's tie number two. Give it a little tug, straighten it out. That brings us back to our kerchief, and now we're working down the first short side from the long edge down to the point. And we're going to repeat that same little single crochet, split shell, single crochet, split shell, all the way down. So into the first space, right at the base of our tie, we're just going to single crochet into the space. 
and into the next space we're going to work the split shell pattern which is three double crochet chain two and into the same space three more double crochet Right, so three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all in the same space. Single crochet into the next space, split shell into the next space, and so on all the way down. And I'll hook up with you right down here in our chain five point space. We've repeated the little split shell, single crochet, split shell pattern all the way down. That brings us up to the points. The last thing you would have done is a split shell, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and into the chain five space, so right at the point, we're going to single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain five, single crochet and chain three and single crochet so all into that chain five space we're just making a a little kind of flowery point so single crochet chain three single crochet chain five single crochet chain three single crochet all into that chain five space and you get this really sweet little miniature scalloped flower kind of point. All right, we are going to finish off the border up our second short side. So this is technically treated as the single crochet space. So the very next thing we do to make sure it's exactly the same as the opposite side is to work a split shell. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into that next space after you leave the big chain five point space and then you continue with the same pattern all the way up. So a split shell, followed by a single crochet, followed by a split shell, followed by a single crochet. So there's my first split shell, my single crochet into the next space, and so on, all the way up the other side. From our flowery little point, we've worked that little split shell, single crochet stitch all the way up the other side and the last thing you should do is when you arrive up at your first tie you've created your last split shell that leaves you with one space that's the same space that your tie is kind of anchored in and you're going to single crochet into it and that is it you can slip stitch into the bottom of that tie just to neaten things off you're going to trim your yarn fasten off, grab your needle, and you're going to weave your tail in. Now you've got a plentiful number of stitches here that you can weave your tail in under. I'm going to weave mine in underneath all these nicely grouped double crochet stitches back and forth a couple times until it disappears. If you still have a little tail hanging out uh, from the very beginning, which would be in the center here, uh, that would be around this area right here. Make sure you weave it in. I've got a little tiny piece left. And then for aesthetic purposes, you may wish to block it. So get the whole thing damp, squeeze out the water, lay it flat on a towel and pat down all of your little points so that they want to lay flat when you're wearing it. And they have a nice little sort of little peak action going here. So you've got that all the way around your pretty little summery kerchief. And there you go, one pretty little kerchief for you, for your friends, for your daughters, in a single regular ball of summer nights. You could probably get at least two, and of course if you've got one of these bonus bundles like I've got, probably anywhere up to four. So you and all of your favorite girls can look just as pretty and elegant as a 1940s gardening movie. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed today's video, and thanks again to Lion Brand for sponsoring it, and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody! Hi, everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. 
Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.